Hey everybody, Rob Orgel with Silencer Syndicate. In this video, I wanted to spend some time and talk about some different modifications you can make to your AR-15 to make them a bit more suppressor friendly. Now, I think there's some controversy and opinions about buffers, buffer weights, buffer springs, etc. And I think that for me, that's not the best way to tune an AR-15. For some people, they find success in that. I personally don't find that to be the best tool. I think that there's a couple other tools that create better longevity and better effects behind the weapon. So given this is based on my experience, my time as a firearms enthusiast, collector, and firearms instructor, where I have seen literally thousands of different weapon systems come through these classes, and we'll shoot 500 rounds in a day, and we'll really get a good stock of whose weapon is overgassed and therefore doesn't get through the end of the day or gets gunked up too fast, or someone who takes their suppressor off because their rifle started to get heavy at the end of the day and then their gun doesn't work correctly or they have a baffle strike and the whole day has to stop to fix those kind of problems. So know that for me, what I look for in a suppressor host or a modification to make a good suppressor host is that the rifle can do suppressed and unsuppressed kind of at the flip of a switch. So what that means is if you do the buffer thing, once it's tuned, probably if you don't have your suppressor on, it's only tuned for the increased back pressure with that suppressor. So when you remove that suppressor, it might not cycle reliably. So there is a scenario in which I'll tune a gun to only be fired suppressed, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But with a buffer system, it just makes it very difficult to swap back and forth. So I'm an advocate of a system that allows me to use my suppressor and to not use my suppressor, even though most of the time I am going to use my suppressor. There has been some scenarios where by surprise, we need to make this rifle work right now. And yes, you'd rather have your suppressor, but you don't get it now. There's another side to this coin that I think is kind of overlooked. And that is if this rifle is to serve in any type of a duty or home defense type role, if the suppressor is to take a baffle strike and the suppressor goes down range or whatever, you now have a bolt action rifle. So as it pertains to range operations where we can time out and go get the suppressor and inspect it and maybe tune our gun again in real world application, that's not an option. So I need my gun to work reliably suppressed and unsuppressed, essentially at the flip of a switch. So what does that mean for me? Let's look at my three favorite methods of suppressor back pressure mitigation. So obviously there is low back pressure suppressors and that changes how much gas comes rearward to a very small degree as opposed to a full back pressure suppressor which really ramps up the horsepower in your bolt speed, causes malfunctions, kicks gas in your face. I don't think I need to explain why increased back pressure is a bad thing, but I think that there are some people that might say, eh, it doesn't bother me. And in the beginning of my suppressor career, I would have said the same thing until one day I started noticing that an NSR drill, which is five rounds in rapid succession, became very difficult because of all the gases in my eyes choking me up and making it difficult for me to continue engaging or see my target. So there's that aspect. And then there's just, it felt like a 308 instead of a 223. And a well-tuned gun should shoot almost with like very little recoil with a good muzzle device and proper tuning. And then if you add a suppressor, it, it changes that. So tuning it again for that suppressor really is worth it. it. Makes go back to that soft shooting rifle we love so much. Moving into my favorites. So there's the rifle speed adjustable gas system. And the rifle speed adjustable gas system is a favorite because you can make adjustments on the fly and you can make adjustments not just to suppressed and unsuppressed and have these major categories of what this manufacturer thinks a suppressor does versus no suppressor but we get to actually fine tune exactly how much back pressure this suppressor has. And then while we're shooting, if you know 400 rounds in the day, the gun's starting to get icky and it starts getting sluggish, I can increase the gas back pressure just by rolling forward going click. Or if my silencer comes off or I need to make an adjustment, I can put it back to what I know is my unsuppressed setting. So what I'll do is I'll take like a paint pen and I'll circle the suppressed and unsuppressed settings. And I'll put like a U for unsuppressed and I'll circle the suppressor, put an S over it for suppressed for the suppressor I like using with that gun. Now, as you know, we do a lot of testing with this system. So it's given us a lot of opportunities to figure out exactly how much back pressure each suppressor causes. In the end, I will say there is a downside to this system. In my experience, it takes tinkering. I've put together, I don't know, maybe 20 different rifles with this system installed on it. 
And I would say about half of them, once it's installed, it works perfect right out the gate. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. But I've had the other half of them require an extra day of tinkering and sometimes even a second day of tinkering of just kind of making adjustments, changing the plungers, um, you know, little, little critiques to make it run exactly how I want it to run. Now, the manufacturer is going to say that you want it to be in the suppressed setting at like, oh, I don't know, position one, and then you want your unsuppressed setting to be like position six or something like that. This way you can only accidentally give it too much gas and you can't accidentally give it too little gas. Set yourself up for success, especially with the suppressor. I like tuning mine a little bit different because I'm doing suppressor testing for back pressure. So I want the last round hold open to take place with no suppressor at around position 9, 10, or 11. That gives me a big delta to the south so that I can choke off a lot of gas. So when I have a really high back pressure suppressor, I can choke it down and see exactly how much back pressure it is. So for me, that means a little bit more tinkering. So if you're okay with going to the range and testing once or twice, then I think the rifle speed adjustable gas system is definitely one of the best. Now, the next one is adjustable bolt carrier groups. Now, there are several out there. I think there's four or five guys out there. And I think sometimes what gets lost in the weeds is they'll get a, a tuning system that gives you a very finite adjustment, which is great, but then you end up tuning it only for the suppressor. And you already know my opinion, if you lose your suppressor in your gunfight or something happens, you now have to tune your system again and tuning your gun in a fight is just not gonna happen. So the bootleg adjustable bolt carrier group has some nifty features that it has four settings, unlike its predecessor, which was the Gemtech suppressor bolt carrier group. The Gemtech suppressor bolt carrier from my understanding has been discontinued. They came out with their EVAC upper receiver and then they discontinued their bolt carrier group. And I haven't seen one since other than ones that are just discontinued and on sale, which is unfortunate because they had a, a good system. Their system was suppressed and unsuppressed. And in the unsuppressed setting, it ran like a normal bolt carrier group. In the suppressed setting, it would bleed off a whole bunch of gas. I mean like omega 300, full back pressure kind of gas. It was a great system. Bootleg did good and bad, and here's how Bootleg did good. They gave us four settings. So in my testing so far, in the fully locked position or open position, however you want to quantify that, it cycles unsuppressed. However, it does bleed some gas. So what that means to me is on a high back pressure Daniel Defense rifle, it seems to tune it just right. You might have to play with buffer weights to get it to run the way you want it to, but it seems to cycle just right. If you've got some other rifles that kind of already were tuned right and you drop this bolt carrier in, I have found failure to feed, failure to hold open on the last round. I found a lot of problems. So you might have to tinker with it, even in the unsuppressed setting, because it's intentionally bleeding off some gas. Now, again, this is me running PMC X-TAC 55 grain. So if you were to up that to like a green tip, you'd probably be okay. Now, in those four subcategories, or three subcategories, four being the, the no suppressor position, that first setting is dumping a lot of gas. So I have found even the low back pressure, like the Huxwork suppressors, some of those don't cycle, depending upon the, the system you have, in anything other than the unsuppressed setting. So it's worth knowing that, that you're only getting four ticks of adjustment, you know, really three ticks of adjustment, and the full suppressor setting really is great for the Omega 300s, the, the full back pressure suppressors. And then you can find some subcategories with the two additional settings, but know that that first bleed off is a big bleed off. So instead of having like a one through 10 system, in my experience on the platforms I've tested on, and I wanna say I've got about 10 bolt carrier groups like this, and I've tested it in probably 10 or 20 different hosts. It's like 100%, well, let's call it 90% because you're bleeding some, and then it's like 50%, and then 25%, and then like 10% for that Omega 300. So Omega 300 is like, again, full back pressure suppressor. So the pros and cons of this bolt carrier is you bleed a little gas out the gate, that can be good or bad, and you're bleeding large increments in those subcategories. But for this system, you see there is no space to have this adjustable collar. All right, so if you see on this system, I've got a 14.5 with a pinned and welded muzzle device, and the rail system goes all the way up to that suppressor. There's like a millimeter of space. I did a little bit of barrel wiggle to make sure it didn't affect barrel harmonics. I mean, it looks good, but there's no room to get to a rifle speed adjustable gap system or any type of toggle switch that could be underneath there. So that'll bring me to my next adjustable gas system, which would have been an option for this guy. It would just be a complicated option. And that is the adjustable gas systems like the superlative arms. Aero Precision makes one that's a whole bunch cheaper. But this superlative arm system is particularly nifty to me because they gave us that 
normal adjustable choke off how much gas you want system. However, they did it in a piston system. So you can buy on their website a complete piston bolt carrier group and gas system so that not only can you control exactly how much gas and choke it down with the Allen key you're used to. So what superlative arms gave us is not just the adjustable gas block that chokes down how much gas, which is a great system too, this gave us a piston system. So instead of just choking off gas, we're choking off gas to get that reliable soft shooting weapon, but we're also keeping all of the gases contained way up front here and not throwing it back into the bolt carrier group, as we know is a bad thing, particularly in direct gas guns. So there's been guys like, and uh, what is it? Anderson Arms, I believe. They, they came out some time ago with a buy it and install it yourself, make your AR into a piston gun, but it only had like two settings of, of gas. This gives us all the settings we get of that Allen key ball detent system, but it puts it into a piston system. Now, knowing that, if you do go this route, that's two things you need to keep in mind. One, you need to get that long Allen key into the front to make those adjustments. So it's a good idea to give yourself a little bit of standoff from your suppressor like I did in this example. Two, per the example earlier, you have to choose how you want to tune your gun. So for me, what I like to do is to tune this weapon to unsuppressed. So it reliably works without the suppressor. And then I'll put lower back pressure suppressors on it to give me a little bit extra gas than I need to keep it running reliably and smoothly, increase the recoil a little bit, unfortunately. And then if anything happens, it'll send that suppressor down range and still continue to cycle. Now, many of my clients, when they tune their guns, they kind of ask, what's the direction to go? And my answer is, you know, if you're worried about maximum reliability, a little over gas is not a bad thing. But if you're a full back pressure suppressor, then you might tune the gun to the suppressor. In other words, like we discussed earlier, if something happens with the suppressor or you forget to install it, you're gonna end up with a bolt action rifle and obviously that's less than ideal. But you'll get the perfectly soft shooting, well-tuned rifle to that suppressor. Now, having said that, I think most manufacturers would tell you if, if you're like me and you don't like to read the manual, uh, you would find by reading the manual that it says, tune it to perfect for last round hold open. Because the hardest thing for that bolt carrier to do is to go all the way to the rear, extract, eject, feed the next round. But before all of that, it has to go all the way back to that last round hold open. So tune it for last round, hold open, and then most manufacturers are gonna say, give it one or two ticks more of gas, just to guarantee reliability as the weapon gets dirty and otherwise, or you get to a high rate of fire and those gases inside the suppressor begin to eat up and you can get more or less back pressure depending upon the type of suppressor. All right, guys, so the quick breakdown here is the adjustable systems mean you have to pick fully open for no suppressor or you know tune for no suppressor, add suppressor and a little bit extra back pressure, or tune for suppressor, but then if you don't have your suppressor, you have problems. The other system is the adjustable bolt carrier groups, particularly the bootleg. The bootleg does bleed off a little, even without your suppressor, so be cognizant of that and be ready to tinker a little bit. And then you've got a, three different settings of, of suppressor host, which is really quite ideal. And then of course, as I mentioned, my favorite is the rifle speed adjustable gas system. You've seen me use it in a lot of testing. I see it a lot in classes. It makes for a very smooth, it doesn't cycle as fast as a standard system because you're reducing the gas, but it makes for just a very soft, pleasant to shoot gun. And you keep that gas mitigated to the best point for that suppressor. And then unlike the adjustable systems, we give it two extra ticks. On this one, if your gun gets sluggish, reach forward, give it an extra tick if you don't get last round hold open. If you're going into a competition, you gotta make sure you got it. Well, two more ticks of gas, and you can do that as you step up to that competition stage. I think the versatility of the rifle speed adjustable gas system is hands down my favorite. You really have to be careful when you're placing your order on the rifle speed website or as you're ordering your handguard because there's a configurator on their website and you just need to be very nitpicky in how you put your information in to make sure everything is exactly right. Because if you mess that up and your handguard goes over the adjustable device, it gets really hard to make adjustments. I think some of you guys have seen in some other videos I used you know, a tool to stick in there and wiggle through a, a rail system just because I did not pair things correctly. So make sure when you are, if you do go the rifle speed route, make sure you do look carefully at the configurator, double check your measurements before you submit your order to get the best results on the first range date. All right, guys, as always, stay safe. We appreciate the work you're doing in the comments. It really does go a long way. We love doing these videos, especially the host videos as it pertains to suppressors and all the findings we've got. And we love sharing that information with you guys. You all putting comments, sharing the information, sending the link to grandpa, all of that goes a long way to tell YouTube that what we're doing is interesting and beneficial for you guys to learn from. So please keep up that hard work. It really does mean a lot to us and to YouTube. And as always, stay safe and we'll see you in the comments.